You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. It's chip shop curry sauce. And you know this recipe is authentic because it comes from a northerner. And if there's one thing northerners know about, apart from post-industrial urban decay, it's chip shop curry sauce. And even though late capitalism might be destroying our society and environment, we can't decry capitalism completely because it was early capitalism, and that is to say mercantile capitalism, that introduced us to the spices we're using to make this wonderful delicacy. So I've gone in a pan with a teaspoon of curry powder, a teaspoon of turmeric, and a teaspoon of Chinese five spice, and you do really need to use the five spice for this. I was very careful with a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and I'll explain why I was so careful later on. And I added a good pinch of pepper, a half a teaspoon of chilli powder, and a generous quarter of a teaspoon of cumin, along with a teaspoon of sugar. And now these dry ingredients are going to go on a very gentle heat just to release the oils in the spices. You don't need to do this, of course, but it just makes me look like I know what I'm doing if I incorporate this technique into my video. Plus, I reckon I'm halfway to convincing you that this does make a difference to the flavour. Spoiler, I don't know if it does or not. So the reason I wanted you to be careful with your salt earlier is because we're going to go in now with 500 millilitres of stock. It can be any kind of stock you like. And to be honest, I'm just using a ready chicken stock, powder from a jar. And because it's quite salty, I was very circumspect with my own salt. And you may need to adjust your salt, depending on the stock that you use. And once our dry ingredients are mixed into the stock, we can go in with 50 grams of butter or another solid fat. And we're going to let that melt in the pan nice and gently there. And we do need to incorporate some acidity into this recipe now with a teaspoon of lemon juice and a teaspoon of vinegar, and you can put a little bit more vinegar in to suit your tastes if you like, but I tend to put extra vinegar on my curry sauce at the table, and two cloves of garlic will finish this off nicely, but we're not quite done yet, so stick around, and hey, do you remember those triple cooked chips I was noshing earlier? Well, I'm going to show you very quickly how to make them later, so don't shoot off, eh? There's plenty to come. So now I've brought all this to a gentle simmer, we have to thicken it and give it the authentic gloopiness. So we're going to use a cornstarch slurry, and that starts with 40 grams of cornstarch in a bowl. And now we want to pour around 100 to 150 millilitres of cold water into that. And we have to do this separately, otherwise we'll get cornstarch lumps in our curry sauce. And we also have to use cold water, or we won't get a smooth consistency to our rather unromantically named cornstarch slurry. Anyway, we can go ahead and pour the slurry in the curry. Ha! I'm a poet and I'm fully aware of it. Hurry, get this slurry in your curry in a flurry. Don't worry, Murray from Surrey. This is real food. Uh, that looked better written down than it actually sounded, to be honest. I've probably jumped the shark a bit there. But never mind, anyway, because our sauce is thickening up now nicely on this medium heat that we've got it on and we're whisking all the time. And while I do this, if you'd like to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, you could give me a like on this video, or a dislike if you didn't like it. I mean, they work just as well, apparently. And you can subscribe as well if you like and be my new friend, and you'll get a new video every Thursday, so, you know, there's no negatives in it for you, really. Anyway, I did one final taste to check the seasoning, and everything was fine. And if you want to store this, you can store it in an airtight container covered in cling film in the fridge. But I do have to warn you, it will solidify and end up like this. But you can easily bring it back to life again by simply putting it in a pan on a medium heat, pouring in a good glug of water, and whisking quickly to a smooth consistency. And like any curry really, this does taste better the next day. But now this has been brought back to life, I'm very, very quickly, and it will be quick so don't worry, going to show you how to make the best accompaniment to this chip shop curry sauce, triple cooked chips, and you'll know these are authentic, because if there's one thing that northerners know about, Apart from governmental neglect and crippling unemployment, it's jibs. So I chopped some floury potatoes, lovely and thick, and I gently simmered them in very salty water for 8 to 10 minutes, and when they were drained and cooled, I threw them about a bit to rough up the edges, just like this. They're fully cooled, remember, and I cooked them for 10 minutes in oil at 140 degrees Celsius, and that's around 200. 85 Fahrenheit. They were a light golden colour at this point, so I got them out, and you can already see those crispy edges develop in there. Look at that. 
So when they'd cooled fully again, I cooked them again for around 8 minutes at 175 degrees Celsius, and that's about 350 Fahrenheit. And all that there's left to do now is to get them out and serve them up with a very generous portion of our chip shop curry sauce. And I'm going to dip my chips in this sauce here, because if there's one thing northerners know, it's how to dip something long and thick into something hot and tasty. Thanks for watching, you wonderful people. Sarah.